Hey guys, Jay Steven here. So as a lot of you know, one of my absolute favorite primary sources from the Crusades is going to be John of Joinville's Chronicle of the Seventh Crusade, the Chronicle of uh, St. Louis' Crusade to Egypt. This is probably one of the most intimate and um, personal accounts we have in our various Crusades chronicles that are available to us. So I wanted to read a couple of passages here concerning the Knights Templar, as described by uh, John of Joinville. Now these two incidents take place after St. Louis and his army conquer the coastal Egyptian city of Damietta, but before they are defeated at the crucial Battle of Al-Mansura. So these are operations on the Nile. These are, this is the point at which uh, Louis and his army begin to advance up the Nile in an attempt to conquer Cairo. This is between November 1249 and February of 1250. So here's our first passage. On St. Nicholas's day, the king ordered us to make ready to ride forward, while at the same time forbidding anyone to be so bold as to attack the enemy around us. It happened, however, that when the army began to move forward, and the Turks realized that no attack on them was contemplated, for their spies had told them that the king had forbidden it. They grew bolder and flung themselves on the Templars, who formed the van. One of the Turks bore a Knight Templar to the ground, right in front of the hoofs of the horse on which Brother Renaud de Vichier, at that time Marshal of the Temple, was mounted. On seeing this, the Marshal cried to his brother Templars, For God's sake, let's get at them. I can't stand it any longer. He struck his spurs into his horse, and all the army followed. Now our men's horses were fresh, and those of the Turks already weary. And so, as I have heard, not one of the enemy escaped, but all perished. Some of them had fallen into the river and had been drowned. So this is before things had begun to go very badly during the Seventh Crusade. And, you know, we can see here the familiar Frankish tactic of the defensive march. So the advance forward while keeping the army closely arranged so that you can successfully defend against an attack from skirmishers, or you can ward off the effects of skirmishers, that is, uh, you know, local Turks uh, or ambush units sent off from the Egyptian army to, to harass the, uh, the French column. And of course, the point of that is that you don't want kind of what's, what's happening here to take place, which is something, um, you know, uh, the army gets really frustrated or, you know, members of the army get frustrated with the harassing tactics of the Muslim forces. And so somebody breaks off to attack. And then, of course, they are now vulnerable because they are away from the main body of the army and they can be overwhelmed. But in this case, I think what we're looking at is an example of the Templars uh, initiating an attack at the right moment. I know uh, the way Jean of Joinville describes this is uh, that uh, the marshal couldn't stand it any longer. Um, he was so annoyed with uh, the fact that uh, one of his brothers had been killed right there in front of him that he said, okay, that's it, let's just take him out. What we have here is the Templars uh, actually do make an attack finally, and it's fairly successful. It looks like they're able to drive off the Turks and uh, and slay a lot of them. So, so yeah, uh, just sort of a minor incident in the in the Seventh Crusade. Um, and you know, once again, this is before things went really, really badly. And as we know, uh, the Seventh Crusade turned out quite badly for the Christians. But we do know that, um, you know, Louis the Ninth he was not that great of of a commander. He was not a particularly good general, unfortunately, which is one of the reasons there were problems with uh, the Seventh Crusade. But uh, the Templars did, on several occasions, perform pretty darn well during this, this crusade. And this is an example of that. The Templars were, you know, they were the elite uh, cavalry warriors of, of the era. Okay, our next example here is going to be somewhat different. This is going to be the Templars and how they could act as a defensive uh, uh, unit or to kind of help with a, a tactical withdrawal. So let's take a look at this. So this is John of Joinville, again, talking. This is him talking about a, something he personally experienced. On Christmas Day, I and my knights were dining with Pierre de Avalon. While we were at the table, 
Saracens came spurring hotly up to our camp and killed several poor fellows who had gone for a stroll in the fields. We all went off to arm ourselves, but quick as we were, we did not return in time to rejoin our host, for he was already outside the camp and had gone to fight the Saracens. We spurred after him and rescued him from the enemy, who had thrown him to the ground. Then we brought him back to camp with his brother, the Lord Duval. The Templars, who had come upon hearing the alarm, covered our retreat well and valiantly. The Turks came after us, harassing us right up to the camp. In consequence of this, the king gave orders for the camp to be enclosed on the Damietta side, from the stream of Damietta to the stream of Rosetta. Okay, so an interesting passage again. This is kind of the typical sort of minor skirmish and encounter that could happen throughout the course of a campaign like this. So this is not a major battle or anything. Um, just kind of like our last example, except our last example involved uh, the army on the march. At this point, we're talking about the army is encamped. And in fact, John is talking about how he and his knights are actually dining at this point with another uh, knight this Pierre de Avalon. And uh, there's an ambush in their little portion of the camp. Some Saracens spot a couple guys who are out taking a walk or something and they attack them. And so uh, uh, Jean and his knights and you know a small group of knights go out to meet this attack. Now notice here what happens is the Templars who are in the camp, they hear about this going on. So somebody sounds the alarm, says, hey, there's something going on in this part of the camp. The Templars go out to act as, to kind of uh, take care of the situation or uh, minimize the damage, uh, do what they can to protect uh, their fellow crusaders. So in this case, um, after Jean and his men have gone out to fight the Saracens, the Templars help them get back without being overwhelmed by the local uh, Saracen uh, ambushers, the local uh, uh, attackers. And again, you know, in a case like this, um, as Louis' army is making its way down the river and they stop to camp at different times, there's going to be different units of Turks and Saracens out harassing them, uh, looking for you know weak spots, you know whether the, the army is encamped or on the move, um, you know scouts in some cases or actual contingents uh, from from the Egyptian army out uh, on some sort of mission to um, to take to weaken the Christians. So. So interesting here, uh, the Templars, you know, they were, again, they were kind of the elite unit and they did uh, act in this way frequently to, um, you know, to salvage a situation, to uh, act as, as protectors, as guardians. So interesting stuff. I really recommend Jean of Joinville. Uh, you can get a uh, translation of his uh, amazing chronicle of, of St. Louis Crusade, of the Seventh Crusade. Um, Penguin Classics has it has it available. It's, it's one of these almost the go-to sources for uh, Crusade Chronicles that you know when people kind of first get interested in the Crusades and they want to get some primary sources, this is one that's likely to end up in their hands. But uh, Penguin Classics has it paired with uh, Via Hardwin's Chronicle of the Fourth Crusade, so uh, it's something to look for on Amazon. Hope everybody's doing well. I'll talk to you soon.